everybody, and welcome to Charts with Dan. We have a lot ahead of us today. We're going to talk about the first actual studio box office reported numbers in about five months from our neighbors to the north up in Canada. And I'm going to talk about the pending reopening of many theaters here in the United States, what you might expect, and what the road ahead may look like. But first, let's get to the weekend box office. We've been reporting it some weeks and not reporting it some weeks, but this week, for the first time since March, we do have some studio reported numbers for a new release. As I mentioned, it is for uh, theaters that were largely opened in Canada this past weekend. The North American numbers, and a lot of people have asked me this question, North American numbers do count U.S. and Canada. So these are numbers mostly from theaters or all, almost all from theaters that were open in Canada. However, it is for a movie that will not be released in theaters here in the United States. It's the newest SpongeBob movie. Spon the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run, is the number one movie at the box office for this past weekend. Right now, as I'm recording this, with a reported total of around $900,000, the final results will come in later today. Uh, again, that is all coming from Canada because this movie is not being released theatrically in any way, shape, or form here in the United States. It's going to go to streaming. A Paramount pulled it from the United States release schedule earlier this summer. Uh, number two is a film that it certainly appears will definitely be opening here in the United States and has already opened in several other countries worldwide, Unhinged. That brought in just over half a million dollars to be in the number two spot. And then uh, the films rounding out the top five are ones that are a mix of U.S. drive-in revenue, uh, whatever smaller theaters may be open. The Tax Collector from David Ayer at number three there. The Rental at number four from Dave Franco. And then a new film that is, uh, as so many this summer have been, available on streaming and also in select theaters, mostly drive-ins, uh, The Silencing, so starring uh, Nikolai Koster-Waldau and Annabelle Wallace there at number five. So we actually have a studio film at number one. It's just not playing here in the United States. It's playing up in Canada. But that this is a step. This is a step in getting back to a resumption of some form of theatrical exhibition here in the U.S. and in North America. Uh, it will not be normal for a very, very long time, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. But let's look at a, a time when movie going was what you might call normal. We like doing this here on the show. We're going to take a look at a flashback weekend, and this is a flashback to a weekend it's hard to believe a decade ago august 13th through the 15th 2010 10 years ago this past weekend the expendables opened uh, and i've added which week these movies are playing because a lot of people said that might help them put these charts in uh, a bit of context the expendables opened at number one with almost 35 million dollars then julia roberts's Eat, Pray, Love was in number two. You had the second week of The Other Guys in the third place at $17.4 million. And then Inception in its fifth week at $11.2 million. But this is the movie that a lot of people probably remember, or many people probably remember from that, that weekend. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which had a lot of buzz. It was a Comic-Con sensation. A lot of expectation. Uh, the biggest stage yet for director Edgar Wright at that time. Opened in fifth place with $10.6 million. That was a very disappointing box office result versus what was expected and what was budgeted for that film. Uh, and, you know, it is a movie that is beloved by many now, uh, a decade later. Uh, one of those movies, kind of like Austin Powers, where uh, its life after release theatrically uh, far outgrew what its impact was when it opened in theaters. So hard to believe, though, 10 years since Scott Pilgrim vs. the World made its debut in theaters here in North America. Let's take a look at some other notable moments from this weekend in box office history. Back in 1979, Apocalypse Now began its run opening in limited release. It's kind of how movies used to run. They'd open in three or four or five theaters and slowly roll out across the country. In 1986, David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly starring Jeff Goldblum opened at number one. Back in 1995, the movie that a lot of people that aren't me think is the best video game movie of all time, Mortal Kombat, uh, and by extension, one of the best uh, soundtrack songs, and I'll agree with that one, uh, opens at number one. And then 15 years ago, 15 years ago, Steve Carell and Judd Apatow burst onto the scene. Judd Apatow obviously uh, had been a, a, a very prolific career writing. Steve Carell with The Daily Show, but Steve Carell is a leading man and Judd Apatow is a director. Burst onto the scene. 
15 years ago with the 40 year old virgin it had a surprising uh surprisingly strong box office run it was what you might call a sleeper hit at that time uh, certainly not a lot of expectation going into it but uh the chest waxing a great marketing campaign etc turned that movie into a surprise hit i remember because that was you know the between office season one and office season two steve Carell went and got himself made a movie star. So I talked about the fact that theaters are largely scheduled to open this next weekend, and we've already seen glimmers or perhaps a, a, a bit of a trail of what reopening may look like uh, in other markets that have opened theaters, uh, one of which is China. China has had a very slow, uh, limited rollout of their uh, theatrical market. The restrictions have been eased somewhat regarding capacity, regarding length of film that can be shown. And actually, the number one film in China this past weekend was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the first Harry Potter film. And it put up the best box office numbers for any movie uh, since films have reopened. Now, it was not a, a massive number. It was around $15 million for the weekend, which, uh, you know, compared to the size of the, chi the Chinese market normally, uh, is much, much smaller than expected. But what we have seen in the Chinese market as it's reopened uh, are incremental steps up from $2 million to $5 million to $7 million. The The numbers, the totals keep going up as the weekends uh, have gone on. Uh, Interstellar was re-released and did some good numbers. There have been a few Hollywood blockbusters. As a matter of fact, Bad Boys for Life was released in China just this past weekend. It made a few million dollars. So we're seeing a slow return to theatrical uh, business uh, in China. And the question will be, is that going to be the model that we see here in the United States as many theaters, including the big theater chains, Regal, Cinemark, AMC, and many, many others, are opening their doors this weekend unless, I mean, this is the closest we've gotten to it, unless something happens. Um, and, and there's another push. It looks like it's actually going to happen this weekend that chains are going to reopen. However, they're not going to reopen everywhere in the United States. There are still many states that are under lockdown, many states that have not yet, as of this taping, approved movie theaters to open for business. As a matter of fact, let's look at the 10 uh, largest cities here in the United States and see what their status is as far as theater openings. Now, again, this is as of today. It's very possible that some of these states may approve theater opening plans uh, before Friday. But when you look at the 10 biggest United States cities, the two largest, New York and Los Angeles, where I am right now, both closed. Theaters have not been cleared to reopen. Then number three and four, Chicago, Illinois, and Houston, Texas will have theaters open uh, and available for movie going. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, the fifth largest market. As of right now, theaters have not been cleared to open uh, in Arizona, or at least not in the Phoenix area, so that will be closed. Philadelphia and San Antonio, the sixth and seventh largest cities in the United States, will have theaters open, as will Dallas, which is the ninth largest city, so Texas, uh, and also some select places in Florida. Many, Most places in Florida as well uh, have theaters cleared to open. But then the eighth and, and tenth largest cities uh, in California, San Diego, San Jose, uh, as I mentioned, theaters in California have not yet been cleared to open. So when you look at this map of the ten largest cities in the United States, five of the ten as of today do not have clearance to open theaters. So there will be a, a, a probably somewhat significant number of people returning to movie theaters this weekend. However, in some of the largest population centers in the United States, including right here in California, we do not have that option currently. Now, maybe there will be some kind of a plan announced, but I don't think it's going to be for this weekend. We're only four days away. Theater owners need to have time to make those preparations. It may be in time for when Tenet opens on September 4th. We just don't know. So don't look for a huge number uh, as far as box office goes this weekend because, number one, as we're going to look here, theater capacities are not going to be full. Number two, uh, even if they were uh, allowed to operate at full capacity, it's unknown how many people are actually want to go to a theater or feel safe going to a theater. And number three, many of the largest population centers won't even have the option to reopen theaters. However, as I mentioned, the largest chains in the country and many smaller theaters as well will be opening this weekend. So I let's paint a roadmap, a little bit of a roadmap about what you can expect this weekend 
at different chains that are uh, that are in states and cities and uh, localities that have approved theater openings let's look at the largest chains amc actually has uh, currently uh, as uh, by their own announcements now we'll see how this works out but they currently have the most restrictive as far as capacity goes uh, guidelines of course in all of these chains masks are required except while eating and drinking in the theater amc theaters has reported that they are capping their theater capacity at 30 percent or less now when you see this or less that is subject to any local guidelines that may be available so for example if california were to say oh we are allowing theaters to reopen but we're only allowing them to reopen at 25 percent capacity then that is the capacity limit that amc uh, would operate on but but at, by their own announcement right now they they have said that they will not be opening at a capacity of more than 30 percent regal theaters who opens re operates regal edwards united artist theaters uh, they have announced that their capacities are capped at 50 percent uh, or less depending on local guidelines so uh, their capacity will not exceed half full theater theaters uh, Cinemark theaters they operate Cinemark Century theaters uh, Tinseltown theaters Cine Arts Rave uh, they have said that their capacity will be subject to local guidelines so they will follow if there are guidelines uh, that have been announced as far as theater capacity in individual states or cities they will follow those guidelines however they have also put in put in place social distancing guidelines meaning that you will have adjacent seats blocked off uh, depending on the type of theater it's one or two seats for the larger seats it's one for the smaller seats it's two so their guidelines are also going to be largely driven by how many people are buying tickets and how many seats have to be blocked off between those groups uh, and then alamo draft house of course a specialty chain not one of the larger chains but uh, they are doing a similar thing that their capacity is set according to local guidelines uh, or if there is no local guideline uh, they are blocking off two adjacent seats uh, next to a group or individual or party uh, and also this is the reason that I included them they have an interesting uh, also uh, additional requirement which is that they are asking all patrons to remain seated after the end of the film and they will have a staggered exit plan uh, I'm assuming with ushers on site a uh, row by row uh, to exit the theater so that not everyone is exiting the theater at the same time. Now, these, the these theater chains also, of course, uh, do have mask requirements outside of auditoriums. Masks must be worn at all times outside auditoriums. They are uh, enforcing uh, concessions and social distancing, uh, shutting down certain registers at concessions so that people aren't quite as logged in together this way a lot of them are putting in contactless uh, uh, measures for concessions to make that process quicker uh, but you know we are really in you know this is not the destination this is going to be uh, a very very long process and I think the really interesting thing is going to be how many people come out uh, this weekend and at what number do they come out uh, and what is that going to tell us about the the future of uh, you know the next several weeks here in in uh, the US I think that Warner Brothers is definitely going to be looking not really I mean Tenet obviously they're very inter interested in but you know I think they're going to be looking at what the potential market is going to be for Wonder Woman which is still on the schedule for October we could still very easily see that movie get pushed back if they make the determination that the market is just not going to be there a lot of X factors but that's a little bit about what to expect uh, if you choose to go back to the theater this weekend and uh, if there's one available near you and uh, we'll say a couple more things about that at the end of the show but why don't we see what people are choosing to watch at home uh, in the last weekend uh, before some theaters open and many of the larger theaters open Open here in the United States uh, first of all let's look at Amazon and see what people have been watching on Amazon and Trolls World Tour as it has been since most of this pandemic uh, is at or near the top of the list uh, followed by Red 2 the King of Staten Island comes back to the chart I believe that the rental window uh, has opened uh, on the King of Staten Island instead of just having to do the premium VOD and, and at the higher price you can now rent it uh, for a lower price so we've seen that come up the chart on a couple of different places uh, then 2020's The Secret Garden Game Night The Outpost Jumanji The Next Level and John Wick Chapter 3 all holdovers from the last uh, few couple weeks then The Silencing which we saw earlier uh, on the uh, box office charts. The silencing there at number nine. And at number 10, I just love it when movies like this pop up. Jackass the movie. Why not? 
have a couple laughs. Maybe it's because Steve-O did this whole stunt here in Los Angeles. He duct taped himself to a billboard. Uh, anyway, the Jackass guys were on somebody's mind. They're there at number 10 uh, on the Amazon rental list. Let's look at what people were watching over on iTunes. We have The Tax Collector uh, spending another week there at number one from David Ayer. The Silencing at number two over on iTunes. Then Made in Italy with Liam Neeson. That was there on the chart last week. Uh, two new entries to the chart this week, Homefront and Sputnik at number four and number five. Trolls World Tour and The Outpost at number six and seven. Uh, the King of Staten Island, as I mentioned, makes a return to the chart at number eight. I There's a documentary about fungi at number nine. It's called Fantastic Fungi. It's the number nine movie on iTunes. At this point in the pandemic, why not? Let's let's turn to, to spores and molds and mushrooms and whatever else. Uh, let's talk about fungi. Somebody was, because they're at number nine on iTunes. And then at number 10, The Secret Dare to Dream, uh, which is also a holdover. And over on Netflix, the number one movie is a movie that I actually did a review for, if you want to check it out, called Project Power. It's the latest Netflix original with Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. That is the number one movie over on Netflix. Then we have at number two, The Lost Husband, another uh, addition to the Netflix list. Mr. Peabody and Sherman, this is an animated film from a few years ago. Then we have a few holdovers, Work It, uh, Dennis the Menace, and Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park has been a very popular film this summer for people at drive-ins, for people on Netflix. Then a few additions or returns. We have An Easy Girl, which is a new uh, movie there in the top 10. Despicable Me, which has been in and out of the top 10 all summer. Uh, we Summon the Darkness. And then at number 10, Adam Sandler's Summer on Netflix continues to get great with Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds is there at number 10. So we have two countdowns that we have been doing here on the show. One of them is the countdown to new movies and we've had a question mark because we have had to adjust this countdown so many times let's look at the countdown to new movies today it stands at four days again barring anything really unexpected this will be the last countdown to new movies because we will get unhinged which has been and then not been and then has been and then hasn't been the first new movie to open uh, nationwide in theaters it will open unless something drastic happens in four days time the countdown will end and we'll go on from there as a matter of fact the first countdown to new movies i did was on june the first of this year and it started at 30 days i started the countdown to new movies almost three months ago and that countdown started at 30 days because at that time july early july late june was supposed to be the the first release date for new movies so we've had an almost three month countdown that started at 30 days um of course the way that countdowns have gone on this show i guess that shouldn't be that much of a surprise uh, because there is another countdown that we've been doing even longer and we are we are brushing single digits Brushing single digits on the countdown to new mutants, 11 days. They are still putting out advertisements. They are still putting out posters. They are putting out social media marketing. They are saying that this movie is coming out next Friday. We are 11 alleged days away from the new mutants finally being released in theaters uh, I'm not really going to know what to do with myself once both of these countdowns or countdowns end because uh, I, I guess I got to find a new thing. You know, I, I started it way back on my old show several years ago on Screen Junkies Plus. Uh, it was the countdown to nine lives with, uh, you know, that crazy talking cat movie. And then we had the countdown to the Meg a couple years ago. And then we had the Meowdown, uh, counting down to do cats. And then the countdown to new mutants. So I guess I'm going to have to find the next movie to do a countdown for. So if you have any ideas, if you see one on the horizon, let me know because uh, the, the, these countdowns have become part of the fabric of this show, both on this channel and, and the other channels where I used to do it. So um, yeah, I, gotta, I, I might have to find a new countdown. We'll see. Although I'm still not convinced that the new, I know we're 11 days away. I am still not convinced that the new mutants is actually going to come out. But as of today, as of right now, it is. So we shall see. But four days away, 
from the release of Unhinged. By the way, uh, I will be reviewing Unhinged right here on this channel. Uh, even though I cannot see it in a theater anywhere around here, the studio uh, is sending out screener links for critics. I believe the embargo is the release day, which is Friday. So look for that review right here on the show on Friday for Unhinged. Even though I can't go see it in the theater, I can still provide a review for those of you that are able to and that choose to go see it in a theater. And if you do choose to go, just before we wrap up the show, um, you know, obviously this is a moment that a lot of people have waited for. Uh, we have, this has been unprecedented. We've been five months without going, being able to go to a movie theater, and it's been a very long road. There are places where, given current levels, I think it is safe to allow this if and when the restrictions are followed and the guidelines are followed. And that's what I would encourage you to do. If you're in a place where theaters are open, please, please, please follow the guidelines, wear your mask, don't take advantage of the wear your mask only while, except while eating or drinking rule to just decide not to wear it in the auditorium. Uh, because, well, for several reasons. Number one, for your own protection. Number two, for the protection of everyone else around you, uh, because this is what, it's its really half about protecting yourself, but also largely about protecting the people around you. So for your protection, for the protection of everyone else. And honestly, if neither of those things really resonate with you, um, also just because if this doesn't go well, if this opening goes very badly, if the guidelines aren't followed, if health departments have to step in, or if theaters become a hotbed for infection, then we all know what's going to happen because we've seen it happen already, which is that these theaters will shut down again. Um, there will be no movies for anybody. Uh, the releases that are currently on the schedule will get pushed back or pushed to streaming or whatever else is going to happen. And this long wait that we've already had for new movies is going to get even longer so please i encourage you if you are going to the movies follow the guidelines follow the restrictions help to keep this opportunity available for everyone else help to keep yourself safe and to keep everyone else safe and i know that this sounds like a narc thing to say but if you see someone breaking the guidelines or breaking the restrictions say something to someone in the theater so that they can work on getting that uh, uh, rectified. Theater employees are probably going to be doing the best that they can, but they can't be everywhere at once. So I know this, this is not like talking in a movie theater, okay? Listen, I've reported people for talking on a movie theater. I'll be the first to admit, it's a narky thing to do. I get it, but maybe you should just shut your damn mouth while I'm trying to watch Justice League with my girlfriend who's never seen it. Uh, I shushed a child. I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, this is different. Uh, this is about protecting yourself. This is about protecting others. And this is honestly about protecting the business that you are currently occupying. If you see someone breaking the guidelines and you don't feel comfortable asking them to put their mask on or respect social distancing, please ask find someone in the theater and ask them to enforce that rule because that is truly the only way that we are ever going to get back to any semblance of normal uh, when it comes to the movie going experience. You know, I, I got a, a tweet from uh, one of my followers uh, on Twitter who said that, uh, that lives in Canada, who said that they went to see the SpongeBob movie uh, this past weekend. It was the first time that they had gone to a theater, that the theater chain itself did have social distancing guidelines in place where you could only book certain seats together and you had to leave seats open, uh, but that those guidelines were not being followed and that the row in front of, of, of uh, this person uh, filled up with people uh, almost immediately and that they left five minutes into the movie because they did not feel safe in that environment if you go enjoy yourself be safe keep yourself safe keep others safe and i i do sincerely hope that we are in a spot very soon where people around the country uh, are able to join you I, I i'm not gonna lie i am a little bit envious because i Love the theatrical experience, and I can't wait until the day uh, when uh, Mara and myself are able to safely go uh, and enjoy a movie in a theater again. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching the show. There is a lot more coming up on the channel this week. As I mentioned, there will be a review of Unhinged. 
uh, here on Friday. Uh, so if you are going to go see that and you want to see what I think, you can come back here on Friday and check that out. Also, this Saturday is a big day. It's kind of what Comic-Con wasn't. Uh, if you don't know, DC is holding a huge event on Saturday, basically an all-day into the night event called DC Fandom, where they have promised to give updates and uh, first looks and trailers and exclusives and announcements for just about everything on their slate coming up. I will be watching and I will also be here on the channel. We may even experiment with going live uh, for breaking news because it is just stacked up one thing after the other. So if you want to know what's going on with DC Fandom and what I think about it, be sure to look out here on this channel on Saturday because I'll be here all day uh, breaking news and reacting to news as it happens. Also, if you want to see uh, other stuff that I'm doing, you can check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dan Merle. Uh, in addition to everything that we already do, I'm also adding some new things, the first of which is a full breakdown and recap of my most recent title match against Ethan Irwin in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Uh, if you're able to watch that live as the pay-per-view event uh, uh, on Friday night, you can see my thoughts on it there. It's a Patreon exclusive. And thank you for watching me here. I really appreciate it. I'll be back next week. We'll see how Unhinged does. It's really the first official box office week since like I launched this channel. So what's it going to be? Is it going to be high? Is it going to be low? Are the studios just going to not release numbers? We'll find out together next week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.